Well, welcome back to the Virtual Flower Show, and we've still got our exhibitors all here with us. They're all missing being at shows terribly this year, and uh, hope to see you next year, of course. Um, we've got some more questions now to go through, and the first one is a hollyhock question, and this is from Glenda, who's growing them. She's got these images of them from childhood, these beautiful, tall spires of hollyhocks. They are amazing. She's tried to grow some now for two years. They do okay to start with, but by sort of midsummer, they are completely covered in orange spots all over the leaves. The leaves just look horrible and they just look distorted and stunted. And she wants to know what it is and how to prevent this from happening in the future. So uh, Mary and Terry, is that one you might be able to do for us? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think, um, I think we got the, the uh, the main part of that question. Uh, it was to do with uh, hollyhock rust, uh, which um, is a, a, a disease that uh, affects mostly the older cultivars of hollyhock, uh, particularly the double flowered sorts. Uh, luckily, uh, these days, the new sorts, which are uh, hybrids uh, using Eastern European species that uh, are uh, virtually uh, immune from rust, uh, don't seem to suffer from it uh, anything like as badly. So uh, those would be the sorts to go for. Uh, and um, the single flowered ones are definitely uh, not as prevalent um, for rust as, uh, as the doubles. Uh, so use the Halo series, which is uh, a good range of uh, single flowered hollyhocks, and uh, those should be absolutely fine. Uh, the, but if, if, she's if, got, if she's got rust already yeah. and she likes that particular one, she could save some seed from it, couldn't she? That, that, would, that, be, again. that would be very true. Or yeah. um, what, what do the Victorians used to do? They used to grow dahlias in front of them and just take off yeah. the old leaves? If, you, if you're really passionate you to grow the, um, the, the old-fashioned traditional salts, then uh, the best thing to do really would be just cut off the lower leaves of the, the rust-infected leaf and um, simply plant dahlias, as Mary says, uh, at the base of them. This is what the old Victorian head gardeners used to do, and it was very successful, and, and uh, it, it makes a really good effect in the garden. So okay. disguise them rather than uh, try yeah. to fight. Okay, because it is frustrating. If you grow them from seed, you often get the rust, but then sometimes there's some in the village where I live that have been there for years. They self-seed, they grow out the bottom of a brick wall. There seems to be no... Yeah. Yeah. as healthy as anything it just it's yeah this is the great thing it, it's very important not to over, not to feed them at all really uh, mm -hmm. just treat them in uh, in the hottest driest corner of your garden uh, where nothing else would grow and they'll be magnificent uh, but if you're really passionate about keeping the uh, the double flowered sauce particularly save the seed from those uh, and then dig up the old infected plants and burn them and grow on a new batch from seed. Okay, right, thank you for those tips there. Thank you, Mary and Terry. Right, we're moving on now, and this is a question from Terry, not our Terry, another Terry, and it's about a tree fern. Uh, wants to know uh, how to overwinter it. He gets all conflicting advice on how to overwinter it. Um, so what is a sure fire way to keep it through the winter, Mark? Uh, it really depends on how bad the winter is. Um, down in the southeast, we generally don't need to do anything. It can stay out in the garden unprotected and should be fine. Um, if you're going to wrap them, it's the top part, the crown, that needs the protection. And it's really important to use a breathable material, straw, fleece, hessian. Um, people tend to like bubble wrap, but that's terrible because it makes the plants sweat. Um, and you, you actually hold more frost in the crown. Um, if you want to wrap them, um, straw in the crown and then fold the old leaves over and then to hold the straw in place and then tie that up with some, some jute string so it doesn't look too out of place. Uh, that's, the best, that's the best way. Otherwise, if it's in a pot, you can move it somewhere more sheltered. Um, but, but generally, in the southeast, we don't really have any problems. The last time we lost tree ferns in the winter was 2010. Right. When, we had, when we had minus 18 at the nursery um so it, a bit of a bit of breathable material in the crown it's the top part that's important that's the growth, growth part I, I think you, you've hit it there isn't it lots of people wrap things in polythene and bubble polythene thinking it's going to protect them and it actually just makes things so much worse doesn't it so yeah I'm, 
is ideally you should have the tree fern in a sheltered spot in your garden um, with a microclimate under a tree against a wall so you're sort of giving it, it natural protection if you're if you're having to wrap them it's not ideal and people generally over protect them and it does them more damage okay lovely right thank you for that um matt a question for you on carnivorous plants um this is from pippa <clears throat> she is growing them and they catch the flies but she's got green fly on them so how do you get rid of the green fly or encourage the carnivorous plants to eat the green fly on the plants yeah, sadly green fly attacks all the carnivorous plants <laughs> and none of them can eat them believe it or not even the sun juice they get into the parts that aren't sticky um, not only do they distort the new growth they can also spread virus so you really do need to get rid of them with a, a spray something like SB plant invigorator Provado something like that spray them in the evenings out of direct sunlight um, we get asked this a lot will it affect the plants well it, it does actually the sun juice will lose their stickiness for a few days but it does come back after spraying but as I said, the green fly can spread virus, so you really do need to get rid of them. Oh Any God. new growth will come up all twisted and bent. That's the first sign of, of green fly damage. Why don't they eat them? Do they taste horrible? They're really clever. They get in where the plants can't get at them. See, right. they, get new, they, they either get onto plants that haven't formed their traps yet. Well, like most garden plants, are, they like the soft, young growth. And with carnivorous plants, before they're actually, the leaves are carnivorous, they're, they're just sprouting. That's when the green fly gets on onto the leaves before right. they form the carnivorous leaves, as it were. Okay, right, okay, there you go then, Pippa. So you need a little bit of careful spraying on them to, to get rid of the green fly. Um, Linda has asked a question. This is uh, one for Vicky. Um, I thought hookera were evergreen, but mine lose their leaves every winter completely. Why does that happen? So are they evergreen or not? Uh, yeah, they're all evergreen. Uh, the only thing is, if they get too wet or waterlogged, the first thing they start to do, before they go rot and die, uh, the first thing they do is they lose their foliage. So if they start to lose their leaves, that's a sign they're getting a bit wet. Mm. Um, but um, you, you can sort it out by, by just, if, if it is a wet bit or if you've got them in clay by, by by accident because they don't really like living in clay in the winter right in the summer just don't like it in the winter just dig it up put it in a pot and you'll see it look it's like breathes a sigh of relief really <laughs> that you've done that and uh, it'll keep its leaves then throughout the winter okay all right thank you vicky right a uh, peony question uh, this one is from uh, mini b and it's about an ito peony uh, Minnie says uh, she kept some of her Ito peonies in pots as they're planted with, uh, as they were planted bare root last autumn. They're not so good, and no flowers neither. Uh, should I put them in the ground, or any tips on growing them better in containers, please? Do they need to be overwintered in a greenhouse for protection, or is it better to leave them outside to freeze naturally? So this is one I'm not familiar with an Ito peony. So being grown in a pot, not doing very well. How do we look after it? Uh, Alec? Sounds like five questions in one there. Yeah, um, you get paid extra though, of course, for this question. Oh, we get paid, that's marvellous. Um, uh, the uh, intersectional peonies actually generally do very well in pots. They're quite compact plants. Most of them only get to two foot six or so, and they make a nice, tidy kind of shape habit. So they do really well in pots. Um, probably if it was planted in October from a bare root, um, I'd say check the planting depth. So as we talked earlier about uh, planting depth on herbaceous and intersectional peonies, um, really they don't want to be planted more than an inch or two below the surface. So the crown, the top of the bare root, only wants to be an inch or two below the top of the pot. If it is any deeper, you will have a fantastic looking plant, but no flowers. Now, Minnie B says that the plant's not looking so good either. Um, so, I don't know quite what she means by that. Um, it may have been looking nice and isn't looking nice now. And that's quite common. We're getting towards the end of the season for, um, mm -hmm. for peonies. And particularly peonies in pots, they tend to struggle a little bit more, often not watered as much, probably not fed as much. And so they will start their natural cycle of dying back um, two or three weeks earlier than those peonies that you've got planted in the garden. So it could be part of the natural cycle, in which case, I wouldn't worry at all. I'd wait until 
the end of September when the plants completely died down and then cut it back to the base. Um, if the plant's not looking great because it hasn't enjoyed particularly strong growth this season, then that could probably be an indication that the bare root itself wasn't particularly great in itself. And there are bare roots and there are bare roots. So with peonies, you can get a bare root that's very immature, one or two eyes on it, one or two little buds. Um, and we would expect the growth on that to be um, less vigorous, of course, than a bare root that's got five to six eyes. So I would say don't give up on it. Um, keep it watered. Peonies are pretty drought tolerant in the summer, but in a pot, of course, like everything else, they do need to be watered. Um, give it a feed. Nothing too strong at this time of year. Something um, slow release, like grow more or what have you. Um, and just let it die off in its normal way. Hopefully next year it should come back and be absolutely fine. The last part of the question, if I remember correctly, was about overwintering. Yeah, does it need to be in a greenhouse for protection or can it remain outside? Mm. And this is a really good question because peonies, often people think they're very delicate and they're not. And they really, really need a cold spell over the winter if they're going to initiate the bud and flower nicely the following year. So it's really important that you leave your peonies outside totally unprotected. They're hardy down to about minus 20, so they really don't need anything. Um, and in fact, they need probably 14 to 18 weeks at below 10, 12 degrees really to, to really flower properly the following year. Okay. So definitely don't put it in the greenhouse. Um, wait till the end of September when it's died off, cut it back to the ground um, and leave it really low maintenance. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Alec. And finally on this session, this is one for yeah. Uh, Lynn, this is about begonias and it's from Green Lady via Instagram. What is the best way to fight mildew on indoor begonias, Lynn? Um, well, there's probably two ways of doing it. You want, as soon as you've got powdery mildew, which is like a, a white dusting you'll see on the surface of the leaf, you need to spray with a fungicide um, to sort of clear it and also remove the badly damaged leaves. Um, and the sort of if you uh, uh, sort of get rid of the fungus, that's one thing you need to do. But also you need to try and prevent it coming back again. So um, begonias like to have good air movements around the plants, um, and they don't like to be uh, squeezed in tightly with other plants. So don't over sort of sort of congest them basically let the air move around the plants and ideally around the crown as well so try and keep the leaves out of the center and tease them apart so it's nice keeps the air flowing um, and also the, it's stressing the plant that causes the powdery mildew to a certain extent so um, make sure it doesn't get too dry or too wet no no extremes basically no extremes of temperature, so not on a cold windowsill in the sort of spring and time, autumn time, because that can encourage it. And also not in too much heat at this time of the year. So it is a bit awkward, but it's, it's good airflow really, and then treating as soon as you see any fungus there. Okay, lovely, lots of tips there. So hope that works, uh, Green Lady. And we're gonna take a short break and then we'll be back to answer more questions shortly.